In today's video, my friends, we're taking a look at the LG 75 QNED 99. This is the 8K mini LED, brand new for 2021. So we've put it pride of place in our cinema room and we're gonna see how this gets on. Let's get started. Don't forget to hit the red button to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and click the notification bell to get my next video first. So thank you to LG for supplying this TV. All of the thoughts expressed will be our own and we've not been asked to say anything good or bad about it. All of the different parts of this video are timestamped in the description, so be sure to check those out. Right, the first thing to mention with this TV is that it is quite a beast, certainly the 75 inch version. I can't stress enough how important it is that you follow the instructions. There are clear guides to how you lay the TV down to enable you to put the stand on. Everything that you're gonna to need to set the TV up is included within the box. The stand is so simple to put together, I'm not gonna bore you with that setup now. Make sure that you've got enough space for all the packaging as well, because there is quite a lot with this TV. As is custom with all TV reviews now, let's start with the back of the TV. And the one thing that you'll notice straight away is that this has an additional two cutouts. And that's so that you can use the LG gallery style wall mount, which actually then fits into the back of the TV, giving it a completely flush finish against a wall. There are standard visa mounts as well. If you want to just use a standard wall bracket, that isn't a problem. And you get these two little plastic pieces so that you can cover up the holes if you wish. The TV stand incorporates a clever but simple cable management system, which is plenty big enough for all the cables that you can connect to this TV. You'll notice that the power is also a fixed power like on previous and most LG models. But when the cable was in, it looks pretty good. Okay, in terms of connections, we have four HDMI 2.1, which deliver 8K at 60Hz or 4K at 120Hz. I recommend you label up your HDMI cables so as not to have to keep on fumbling around. And if you're wondering how wide that stand is, well, it's around three foot on this 75 inch version. The TV still maintains an incredibly sleek profile though. And I can imagine if you use the gallery mount, then this would look incredible right up against the wall. It is literally just a few centimeters thick. The rest of the design, in my opinion, also doesn't disappoint. If you are going to be using the stand, well, what a stand to use. I think it looks fantastic. It complements the rest of the design of the TV, and with those super thin bezels around the edge, this really is an edge-to-edge -edge display. And the chin at the bottom is minimal too. It really does look fantastic. What's your thoughts on the design? Let me know in the comments. The LG QNED 99 has an IPS display. Now you'll probably hear pros and cons to IPS and VA displays. There's two different types, and in fairness, both have got their advantages, and also both have got some negatives. The one thing that you'll get with an IPS display, which you just won't get on a VA display, are the incredible viewing angles. We'll come on to some of the other pros and cons when we go into full detail in our full review. But in a second, I'm going to pan round and you'll get an idea of how good the viewing angles are. Now there's plenty of TVs out there at the moment where as you go off center, the picture just completely darkens. The one thing that I'm gonna show you here is as I come round to almost horizontal, there is almost no change at all in that picture. There is no darkening and everything is just as bright. Clearly the picture isn't quite as good, but it doesn't darken at all. That means it's gonna be great if you're sitting off an angle. Let me give you some more information about the main features of the LG QNED 99. There is a link in the description if you want to know all of the information, so just click on that. So a mini LED TV may well be the perfect choice TV for somebody that was considering OLED, but is too concerned about potential burn-in. So although the technology is the same as LED and LCD panels, you've now got thousands of bulbs. This means you've got far more control over the picture, and it means that you can get far brighter images. For instance, this TV has been measured of around 1300 nits, which is far brighter than what one of the OLEDs would be. Now the benefit to you as the customer is that the brighter the image, the more bright room you can be in. So you'll get an incredible picture even in the brightest of rooms. Whereas with some OLEDs, you do need to shut all the blinds and literally have a blackout in order to get the very best possible picture. 
This TV also has up to 1800 local dimming zones, which means the contrast between the darker areas, the blacks and the colour is going to be more pronounced, again giving you the perception of better black level detail. Now we'll go into all of that in the full review and I'll go into more detail about how well or not this TV does when we do that full review. But the technology enables us to get just the next level of LED TV. This also has the benefit of quantum dot and nano cell technology merged into one, giving you much more accurate colours. Now, as usual, we'll run through a load of different tests with this TV and make sure it's colour accurate, and we'll report back on how it does in the full review. So keep tuned and make sure you hit the red button to subscribe for that. This TV also has the Generation 4 A9 AI processor, the 8K version, and one of the features of this is incredible upscaling. I'm going to be showing you some of that footage in just a few moments. So this is the brains of the operation, and from what I've seen so far, it does a very good job. Another main consideration for buying this type of TV is its gaming capability. It is absolutely packed full of features. So this has a number of things which most gamers will want to consider. Four HDMI 2.1 ports which deliver 4K at 120Hz. That therefore gives you the faster refresh rates. It supports auto low latency mode, eARC, FreeSync and G-Sync support and it has built-in game optimizer which I'll come on to in just a second. Another consideration for gamers is the fact that this is not an OLED. You don't have to worry so much about screen retention and burn-in. Now one funny thing I have noticed since I've been playing this F1 game is I use the controller like it's a steering wheel. I'm turning, or well, I almost fell off the chair doing it the other day when I was going around a sharp corner. So guys, is there a great steering wheel that you'd recommend? Just drop a comment in the comment section. Okay, let's get back onto the review. One of the brand new settings this year from LG is Game Optimizer, and that's available right across the board on its 2021 models. It's a really simple but effective tool that enables you to switch between different game styles, for instance, first-person shooter or real-time strategy, just by clicking a button. You can then also get a little bit more information about, for instance, how many frames per second the game is running at and whether you've got things like low latency turned on. A simple click of the Game Optimizer button will take you into the main settings section, and here again you can make changes and also see the information in slightly more detail. It does give you a few more options as well, for instance reducing blue light. Certainly the gamers of you out there will definitely appreciate this section to give you a lot more information about your gameplay. Now I will go into full details about the picture quality and all the different types that you can connect to, the 4K content, 8K content, and all of that in the full review. But I wanted just to mention a couple of things. Firstly, the image that you're looking at now is being upscaled from the digital antenna. So I've just got one of those little plastic aerials which I plug into the coaxial section on the back of the TV and it then finds digital channels within my area. And this is the quality of the image provided, which I think is absolutely fantastic. It's just first class. I've not known anything so good on a, just a standard digital aerial. When you do play something like Netflix through the TV, you do get the benefit of Dolby Atmos and Dolby Vision IQ. And this really does give you the best, most realistic home cinema experience. And with the addition of filmmaker mode, it also gives you the ability to see everything as if the director wanted you to. And again, we'll be testing that and looking into that in more detail in the full review. When you go into the settings section of the TV, everything is crystal clear and laid out very easily. I do like the fact that it's just very simple and plain. There isn't any gimmicks, there isn't any animations, it's just very, very straightforward. I also like the fact that it tells you what each option is, and when you go through and make the changes, for instance in picture mode, it will then give you the actual change on screen so that you can see it as it happens, and so therefore you can choose what's best for you. Certainly within the picture mode, I found that Vivid is obviously a no-go. Standard, not too bad. Eco, nah, not really interested. For me, it was either Cinema or it was ISF Expert Bright Space, and that's what I ended up plumping on. New again for 2021 is the web operating system, WebOS, and I think it works really well. Everything is very easy and very laid out straight away, no problems. Issues that you had in previous years with the lack of on-demand content doesn't seem to be there this year. Everything is there and working absolutely fine. You've got your home dashboard, like with previous models, where you can go in and connect to smart devices within your property. And again, that just works really well and it will find them automatically if they're supported devices. 
And for the budding art critic amongst you, there are the options to go into the gallery mode as there was before. There's lots more different options as well where you can download different themes and then have that running on the screen, which again, I think looks really good and it just gives a different dimension. You can choose to have the sound on or off. You don't have to have it on, which again is a nice touch. So my friends, that's it for our first unboxing and first impressions of this QNED 99 75 inch mini LED from LG. I'm absolutely blown away with it so far, but I will go into more detail and cover some of the things which may be not so good about it. Look at pros and cons in my full review, which will be coming up very soon. Let me know what you think about this TV. Is it one that you would consider? Leave a comment. Thank you so much for watching guys and be sure to check out the link in the description, which will give you a lot more information. And it will also give you the price in your location.